All right, well, today is the day that you're going to learn how to play Shine On You Crazy Diamond, uh, technically parts one through five, I think. Um, that opens the Wish You Were Here album, Pink Floyd's masterpiece from 1975, I think. And uh, we're going to talk about just the beautiful lead, how to get close to his tone, um, and take you through the different parts of that song. Hey, if you haven't done so already and you like this kind of thing, please jump down right now and click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell lets you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. There's Super Thanks, which is right below there, which is like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page, where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the lessons that I do here on YouTube. Okay, so shine on you crazy diamond. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of work there. And super long song. Um, but for all us guitar nerds, this is one when we hear it, we're like, ooh, we gotta learn how to play that one. So we're gonna, so we're gonna go through it here. Okay, so in terms of getting your tone, you know, um, it's really hard to get exactly, obviously, um, you know, David Gilmore is David Gilmore. So when he puts his hands on a Strat and puts his fingers and on, on it and plays it, it's going to sound different, even though you've got all the same settings maybe on his equipment. But, you know, in general, um, for this song, you want a largely clean tone. Um, there really isn't uh, much overdrive going on here. And uh, the other piece of equipment that you want to have um, throughout here mixed in is a phaser. Um, so I'll list all the equipment that I'm using here down uh, below in the description and the settings that I've got on it. The other one that I'm te uh, testing out today is the new JHS, well it's not new, new to me, JHS Color Box V2, which is an emulation of a, like when you want to plug direct into a soundboard, um, which I believe was much um, or a lot of the tone um, on this particular song with this guitar. Just sounds ultra clean like that. Um, can't verify it 100%, but um, this really helps to get me close to the tone. And again, I'll put all the settings below and how to pick up one of those if you're interested. Okay, so this song is in standard tuning um, and it's in largely G minor. Um, it's a sort of G minor blues. Um, I'll get to the chords for all the sections um, a little bit later, but let's start with the opening uh, part where the soloing starts, and I think that's around the two minute, five second mark, if I remember right, um, where it actually comes in because it's a lot of keyboard that opens it. So for my tone, um, sounds best to me on a Strat style guitar to get closest to the record um, on a neck pickup. And I've got my tone rolled off. I got my tone all the way down to like two or three on here. Um, and I have my volume rolled back a little bit because this this part here, it's sort of quiet sounding. And um, um, so I'm going to take you through the parts. Um, I've got tabs for all of this um, on my Patreon if you're interested. Um, and Pink Floyd is very, <laughs> very good or their bots are very good at detecting um, you know, uh, potentially copyright infringing stuff here on YouTube. So. I'm gonna play a little bit, talk about it, do a little thing, do a couple of things that will sort of break it up um, uh, as we go along. But but uh, let's go through each part of these. But here's the intro soloing section part. So we're we're up here on the pentaton the G pentatonic minor scale um, in the number one position, but up on the, off of the what is that the fifteenth fret right. Mm -hmm. So those positions there. So it opens with just bending into your G from your B string. Okay, I'm going to play this, um, these parts all the way through here. So that first part is all things that are sort of 
probably familiar to you. Um, nothing earth shattering there. But here's where it diverges a little bit from the standard pentatonic. Beautiful little part here. I believe that's a mix of a Dorian, um, if I am not incorrect. It's adding that A note on there. And then technique wise throughout here um, with his playing, he's got a lot of uh, greater than full step bends, like one and a half step bends. And I think I've learned that Gilmore, he sort of holds on to his bar. And when he does his bends for those big bends, he does your standard bend with your finger and then he pulls up on the bar just slightly to get to that one and a half step. So. Right, so a normal bend would be, and then you get that extra note with the bar, but it takes a little getting used to, you know, getting there. So that part comes in. Beautiful. And then back to our position. Whoops. All right. Now it goes to our C chord. Whoops. So underneath, I believe the chord changes to a C minor, then, then we go to Okay, so you can re rewind that back if you need to, to check that out further, but pretty much everything is happening on that one position up here, with the exception for me, where I think he's doing the, the one and a half step bend. I think he comes down there for that. Okay, then we come to that great haunting uh, set of notes that this song is very much known for. Um, so here's how you finger that part. And this is where I think you would kick on your phaser um, to aid with that sonically. I roll my tone up a little bit and my volume up a little bit. And I'm gonna pick it sort of closer, not all the way back to the bridge, but sort of back here, a little more normal than I normally would pick it to get the articulation of strings. And you get this. Turn that up a little more. Just beautiful, right? So that plays on and he, <clears throat> he keeps that going when there's the chord change too and it fits beautifully. So we've been living in a sort of a G minor space so far. If you can sort of hear that and that fits. Right? Right, and the whole comes in. Comes in with a C major, right? the chords that are happening behind it but that I just think that's beautiful that 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 thing fits over both of those even though it's a sort of ambiguous um, irregular sort of shape or interval but beautiful okay now the chords that are coming in right um, everything sort of builds it's a C major <laughs> Now 
there's lots of guitars sort of layered in here, right? I'm just going to sort of approximate all of them. So those are just power chords, root fifth. Then you have this up here, which is that G minor seven, right? going to go to a turnaround and the turnaround um, is a what is that an E flat to a D right so if we think about the riff again it, it ends there and you get a E flat down to your D So now we go to the next lead section that comes in. Um, and I don't think that's got the phaser on it, the actual lead part on this one. So I'm going to kick that off. Um, and um, there's this is, again, very G minor pentatonic based. I'm going to play it in the positions that I find it most helpful um, to take me through this. But you can find that there's other places to play these notes. Um, but here we go. Coming up here to 15 now. that greater than greater than one step bend again and I like playing it off of that B string so you could play that there or you can play it here to our G again. Okay, so let me talk about those bends down here. I reflexively, because they end up being sort of, um, they could be looked at as one and a half step bends. And he might do them that way, I don't know. I just sort of always learned it by, and I come over here and start my bend on six and do a normal bend. So either of those will work. Okay, then it moves to sort of a nice minor blues jam in G minor. Right, so if you don't know that, that's a common sort of blues um, little riff here off of your big bar chord here. On your G, then you go to your the transition to the C minor this time. You can do that riff again, just slide it over one string. Whoops.
All right, and that section ends. You come up here to this Hendrix chord, which is your D7, where you're adding a sharp five. Okay, then you're back to lead down, and I think you kick your phaser on for this one. This is a nice one here. I love that one. great because it's coming back to that thing that we did in the beginning. Very nice. And then this part is a great climb to get out of it. with that sort of harmony. Beautiful. You could play your chord if you want. I think on the record he just hits the note though. Okay, and then it gets to the actual verses, which is like, I don't know how many minutes into the song before they're singing. Um, but the chords, okay? So this is just beautiful chord writing. I'm gonna start with the chords first, then we'll talk about the little lead, what's going on. So it's G minor, F sharp, B flat. Don't see that every day, right? Um, so beautiful, but those three, what they all have in common is that note, that B-flat note. Just a beautiful transition there, right? And the lead that happens there is starts in the G, and you end it on the F-sharp. And throughout the song, there's a ton of variations that he does on that. You just always want to end on one of the notes that's in that F sharp chord, right? So it's that one or that one usually. But the first one is. All right, and then the shine on you crazy diamond um, chords. There's a couple different ways to play them. Starts E flat. Lower that root note down, but hold, hold the rest of the E flat triad. C minor. B flat. F. Another way you could play that is even keep it going. So all of that was over a B flat. Or a combination. All right. And he ends, there's little riffs that he plays to, to uh, end that part and they vary, but a lot of them are, right? And then there's, that one's cool. We start up here on F on 13, down to 10. Thirteen, ten, eight, and you slide up to 10 and down to one. And 
Bring you back to your next verse. Now the chords that happen underneath here are G minor, chromatic root down, and the guitar that you sort of hear going on is okay and then here's this next be beautiful beautiful climb so you're starting on C C D uh, to E flat and you're putting yourself in position, there's going to be a chromatic climb in here and you're going to build chords around it. Um, but the notes that you're going to, the notes that are going to be climbing chromatically is you're going to move from this note and you're going to end up on your G eventually. That's what's going to be happening. And the chords there are E flat. And then you raise that root note. Um, think of like an E flat seventh. Um, and you're just going to raise, you're going to put your middle finger on the raised uh, note, on, on which is now an E. It makes it an augmented chord, I believe. Right, so you're starting with this. This one. Then the next note in the chromatic climb is this one. But it, you're going to treat that as the fifth of your B flat chord. So it's. And then an F. Another augmented to your G minor. So see, it's. what's going on underneath those chords and there's a little you know he's doing some guitar greatness there too you know he does that little uh hendrix thing and you're back to your g minor all right and then that ne next lead kicks in Let's give it some phaser, why not? So that's beautiful, right? That's just great. He, so he doesn't bring that bend all the way down. just beautiful piece of writing I don't need to tell you right um, and uh, so it runs through that again and um, at the last section here is we come back to a variation of the um, you hear that just a little bit as you're going out during the outro part of this right I think you hear that once and then he switches it to um, a variation of that, where he's not going to lay, he's not going to keep his finger down really on that uh, D string. Now he's going to leave his index finger on six on the B string. And what he plays is a pattern, and I I like to play it fingers, so I sort of roll my pick back. Um, and the pattern is this. Right? 
right? So it's still that part of that, it's still part of it. You're just playing on the last three strings, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The strings, one, two, three. In arpeggiating them upward, right? Right. And that plays over the G minor. And it goes to a C major. It still fits over that. And then it does the E flat to D um, turnaround. And he's sort of relying on the last two strings here. And he plays this little um, uh, uh, variation on the chord. So that's your, that's your uh, E flat. Sounds like he's just doing the two, two strings. I like playing all three. And then down to D. I think he actually... I think he hits that climb note on one, one of those. But either way, you get the idea. It's E flat. And then it closes out on the G minor and a beautiful sax solo to sort of end part five, the final part of that. But, but anyway, those are all the guitar parts. Just a beautiful piece of work. Um, and uh, craftsmanship there. But um, anyway, all of that is tabbed out in detail on the Patreon if you want to check that out. And I hope you learned something new today. If you like what you saw, jump down right now and click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. And let me know in the comments what you think about this. And if there's another lesson you'd like me to do similar um, to this, I'd love to hear about that. Okay, until next week, take care, everybody.